Now, back to filament voltage. You know, that's uh, my question was, what is one of the most important, often overlooked parameters for tube life? And it is filament voltage. Uh, iMac and um, Continental Electronics have published a, a good paper on that. You can do a search on the Internet for extending tube life, and you'll find a, a nice paper here that explains a little bit about filament voltage and its relationship to tube life. Oh, by the way, I'm a contest. Send your answer to hamnationcontest at gmail.com. That's where we're taking answers. But filament voltage is, is very important. Uh, now, you really, I guess, for ham radio applications, we're going to want to run that filament voltage at the rated voltage. Uh, whatever the tube is best for, that's where you want to run it. Um, because most of our uh, tubes are not uh, thoriated tungsten. Thoriated tungsten tubes are a special case, and that's what most broadcast transmitters have in them. However, our uh, amateur radio linear amplifiers usually have oxide cathode type tubes in them, and so they're a little bit different case, so that's why I'm saying stick with whatever the rated filament voltage is. Well, you know, we can't normally adjust that on our amplifiers. There's, they don't give us a provision for doing that. Uh, if you do have a provision, if maybe you can retap a transformer or something like that, then you'd want to measure that filament voltage with the plate voltage off, of course. You don't want any high voltage while you're doing it. But you need to measure it just as close to the filament terminals on the tube as you can, not back over at the transformer, right there at the base of the tube. And you want to use the right meter for the job. Now, you know, we really like these old Simpson 260 analog bolt-on meters. Not really good for this. Okay, well, then you may say, well, we'll take a digital meter. Maybe it's a little more accurate. Well, not all digital meters are, are really good for that. What you really need... And, you know, this is probably overkill for ham radio, but when you're dealing with real high-power transmitter tubes, you want a true RMS voltmeter because your filament voltage um, is usually an AC voltage. Well, in a perfect world, you know, our, our regular uh, meter there would read the, the RMS voltage of the AC there, and, uh, you know, it'd be a perfect sine wave. Well... In the real world, that's generally not the case. As you put a load on an AC line, it's going to distort that sine wave some to where the, the duty cycle of it's a little bit different. It's not a perfect sine wave anymore. It's got some distortions in it. And that's why a true RMS meter is going to give you um, a, a more accurate picture of the actual power that's in that RMS voltage or the actual RMS voltage when you take into account the distortions in the waveform. So for ham radio operations, we're going to say go with the rated voltage for that tube. Now, when you get into higher power stuff, there is a procedure that will be explained in this paper here on extending um, transmitter tube life. That doesn't apply to the tubes that we use in most of amateur radio. You would think maybe um, 3CX uh, 1500 is close enough to some of those broadcast tubes, but no, it's not. It uses the oxide cathode type of filament in there. All that's real important because the, the filament in that tube is emitting electrons, and they put special coatings on that filament wire to help it to emit those electrons. If something happens to that, well, if you run the voltage high, uh, it's going to burn the coating off of that filament so that um, it's going to stop producing electrons earlier. Uh, if we run the voltage too low, that filament's going to act as a getter, and the impurities in the tube are going to be drawn to it, and it's going to poison that filament to where it cannot emit those electrons as easy. So uh, filament voltage is very important for your tube life.